Okay, let's take a look at graphing and transforming functions, further graphical transformations. And these are the last three transformations that we're going to be taking a look at that don't necessarily have anything to do with a particular parameter. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to apply certain uh, functions to a particular function to see exactly what happens. And if you go ahead and take a look at this, we're talking about the absolute value here, the absolute value here, and taking the reciprocal of a function. But the key, of course, is first to be able to graph f of x. If you can't graph f of x, then you're not going to be able to apply these last three further graphical transformations. Okay? So let's just go ahead and start off with number one. It says, what if you have the graph already of f of x? And let's take a look at an example here. Let's say f of x is equal to x squared plus 4. And I just went ahead and made a very simple graph of what that looks like. What if you actually took the absolute value of that function? So in other words, what if you actually said that y is going to be equal to the absolute value of f of x? Or in other words, that it is going to be equal to the absolute value of x squared plus 4. Because of course, that's what f of x is. What actually happens? to this new function based upon this. Now, what you have to remember about absolute values, what exactly, again, is being affected? The only thing that's being affected are the y values, because this function itself is going to be the same. After you get the function itself, all of those y values now have to be positive because you're taking the absolute value of all of those y values. So what that means then is that if we go ahead and take a look at this situation here, and I'll do it in green, all of the positive values, of course, stay positive. Right? All of the positive values stay positive. But then what happens then is that all of those negative values, which were down here, based upon this value of f of x, now become positive values. So they still exist, but they're positive. So what that means then is that the function actually looks something like this. Okay? So, the moral of the story then is that if you actually take the absolute value of a function, you're actually taking a look at all the negative values of the function f of x, and you're taking the absolute value of that, which means that all of those negative y values now become positive y values. So, the key to this then is any values in the, um, what is that, oh, any values below the x-axis are reflected above uh, about. Now notice that this one here is different from what we did before because with the other one, we're actually reflecting everything. So all the things that were negative now become positive. All the things that are positive become negative. This is different because of the fact that all we're doing is we're looking at what's under the x-axis and flipping it up to the positive, um, to the positive what's above the x-axis. Okay, and that's going to be demonstrated there. Let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when you take the absolute value of the function's independent variable. So notice that you have y is equal to f absolute value of x. Notice again what we're affecting is we're affecting the x values. Let's go ahead and take a look at a particular example here and let's say that f of x is equal to the square root of x which I drew here. If I was to actually go ahead and draw y is equal to f of the absolute value of x, then notice that what that actually turns out to be is this function here like that and if I was to go ahead and draw this function, this function would look like this. Well, this part would be the same, of course, because all of those x values would be the same. But all of these negative x values, which didn't exist before, because you can't take the square root of the negative, uh, negative value of x, are now positive because of the absolute value sign. So what you have is you have something that looks like that. So what's happening then is that any values that are to the right of the y-axis are then going to be mirrored onto what is the left side of the y-axis. Okay, so any values to the 
right of the y-axis is reflected about the y-axis. Okay, and becomes a part of the graph. Now, notice that this part over here is still part of it. Even up here, this part over here is still part of it. It's what's not, it's what's below the x-axis that's flipped up. And this part is what's on the right-hand side of the y-axis gets flipped to the left. But it's still part of the function as well. Okay, let's take a look at this last one. This last one is going to be probably the most tricky one. It says the reciprocal of a function. So if we actually go ahead and have a function f of x, if we reciprocate the whole function, what actually happens? Now, I'm going to go ahead and erase some of these because we're going to need a little bit more space there show exactly what's happening here. Okay, so I'm going to take a very, very simple function, f of x is equal to, or what do you know, 1 over x. Okay? And if we were to go ahead and draw that function, that function is going to be very simply drawn this way. We know that there is going to be a vertical asymptote here. This x cannot be equal to 0. And then we know that it's going to um, it's going to look something like that, and then it's going to look something like that. Okay, and there you go. That's what this function looks like. Now, if I was to go ahead and find the reciprocal of that function, then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to reciprocate it. So I'm going to have to take this function and reciprocate it. So what I come up with then is y is equal to 1 over f of x. That, of course, is equal to 1 over 1 over x, which, of course, is just going to be equal to x. So if I reciprocate this function, this is what this function actually looks like. Okay. Now, that, that's, just, that's just crazy. Okay. But if we go ahead and think about what, it's actually, what, it, what is ex actually happening, it makes sense. Take a look at what we have here as two bullet points. It says, as f of x approaches 0, so in other words, as this value here approaches 0, then the y value is actually going to be approaching infinity. So any x-intercepts that you have for f of x is actually going to be convertible asymptotes for the reciprocal of the function. So notice that when I actually took a look at this part over here, there were no x-intercepts here. So that's why there are no vertical asymptotes for the reciprocal of the function 1 over x. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at as f of x approaches infinity, which of course this actually does approach, right? Right here and right here. As these values approach infinity, then y of course is going to approach zero. So what that means then is that if I actually take a huge number here, one divided by a huge number is a very, very small number, which is basically zero. So in other words, the vertical asymptotes of f of x actually becomes x-intercepts for the new reciprocal of a function, the reciprocal of the function. So notice that what happens then is that x approaches is as that, as f of x approaches infinity here and approaches infinity here, notice that the function is actually going to have a zero or an x-intercept of the origin. Because of course the original function that we had had a vertical asymptote there as well. Okay, so we're going to have to take a look a little bit more in depth during class about how this works. And we'll take more uh, examples and various examples to show how we can find the reciprocal of a function. Because if anything, this one gives everyone the most difficulty. So we'll take a look a little bit more in depth in, in class, but hopefully you have at least some idea of what's happening with these further graphical transformations. All right, I'll see you in class, and let's go ahead and investigate more of these in detail, all right?